This site is epic. It's like almost like the Grand Canyon. It's one of those things you just can't appreciate unless you see it with your own eyes. You guys gotta come here and check this out. It's just ridiculously beautiful. I can't believe this is a real place. I'm James. Yo soy Ana. Ahoy. Three months ago, we started an epic adventure to sail around Cape Horn. I was a Navy navigator aboard a submarine and bought my first cruising catamaran after I got out. But after 45,000 miles, it broke in half. I feel comfortable leaving. Uh, the vessel behind over. But thanks to our amazing subscribers, we were able to kickstart a new boat and embark on our biggest adventure to date. <laughs> bringing some of our awesome backers and all of you along for the ride. I'm going crazy. But the biggest adventure of all was just beginning. Join us on Sailing Zingaro. Today's very special episode, we return to an island shrouded in mystery and adorned with enigmatic stone giants. Easter Island. Nestled in the vastness of the Pacific Ocean, it is one of the most remote, inhabited islands on Earth. No civilization in recorded history has been more isolated, and the story of how this island came to be inhabited, and how the very thing they coveted most came to destroy them, is one of the greatest mysteries of modern times. It's one of those things you just can't appreciate unless you see it with your own eyes. We will explore the island, delve into its rich history and profound culture. And learn about the iconic Moai statues that stand sentinel along the island's rugged coastline. One of us needs to go in the water to check the, uh, the anchor to make sure it's set and to make sure we're not in any coral or the anchor line and chain is not in dragging on any coral. Volunteers, I'm sick that day. Um, my mom's calling. Um, I can't swim. Um, you, you came on a 2,000 mile sail and you can't swim. Uh, I've super glued myself to this chair and I don't think I can move. How about one of you guys? You first. <laughs> I th you haven't uh, jumped off yet. I think it's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> Guess I'm doing it. It's uh, there's some big waves that are crashing right behind us. <laughs> this is this is a pretty precarious place. I don't think now that we're the only sailboat here because um, if I was a sailboat, which I am, I uh, would be an Anacana with this swell. Which I think if there are any other boats here, they're not here. They're in Anacana. So we're we're gonna check in and then um, hopefully the uh, the harbor is open. I'm gonna I'm gonna call them right now and make sure the harbor's open. Hospital radio, hospital radio, break tone. I almost said Zingaro. <laughs> Maybe the little feedback thing will get their attention. I am right there where he said to be. I'm just a little bit further out. So they're saying that we need to go to 109.25.58. Okay, check this out. Can you see this? 109.25 right now, if you push this, we're at 109.25.96. That's this way, okay? 
58. Oh, well, that's 30. Let's let's put it like right there. There's 49. It's in the the land. They want us to park on the land. Pascual Radio, este es el velero Break of Dawn. Usted ya fundió, está listo con su maniobra. Sí, señor, pero estamos un poco más afuera del two coordinates, porque en mi mapa two coordinates son la tierra. Sí, correcto. Es por eso eh, que lo llamo para corregir, corregir el punto de fondeo, el punto, la coordenada entregada. ¿Le puedo corregir el punto entregado? ¿Usted está listo a recibir? Sí, señor. Listo. La coordenada correcta para que usted fondee su velero es 27 grados, 08 minutos, 21 segundos sur. Y la longitud, 109 grados, 25 minutos, 58 segundos oeste. All right, we made it. This is our first time on shore. How do you guys feel? Drunk. A little ground still moving. Yeah, slightly dizzy, <laughs> but other than that, great. How about you? Very good. Nice. Sometimes. Yurana made up Nui. Ah, this is. Yurana Manuto. This is Manuto. He came and picked us up. Uh, I got the number from the Armada, the Chilean Navy, and uh, I called Minuto and he said, yeah, yeah, I'll come. And, I, and then we said, hey man, we need a car. Can you take us to a place to get a car? He's like, you want this one? <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna rent us this car. Well, this car. And uh, yeah, it's fun. I mean, like right away, we're on the island two minutes and it's always, it's already like the most personable, cool island. Muchas gracias, amigo. Maururu, korui, pai mayai, irapnui. Sí. Maururu. Ho, oh, hey, ho. Oh. Ho, oh, hey, ho. Oh. ¿Qué es el, el significado de eso? Ese es una, ya de grito de champion, de felicidad. Qué bonita, bro. Eh. <risa> had no supermarket in the 70s, not even in 1973 when the airport opened up. That's when we first witnessed their products coming in from Chile. 1973, we were able to see processed food, such as milk, such as butter, such as what bread would be packaged. We never saw these before 1973. Yeah, we would jump in the water and run after the sheep, uh, ships. We would swim out to the ships and we would have the opportunity to trade. They would give us blue jeans and they would give us candy, chocolate, even bottles of booze. So that would be some of the products we would get. That plant right there is Matua Pua'a. It's sticking out, it's filled inside here and filled everywhere in Napa Nui with these plants. They would be anti-cancer. Matua Pua'a, you would rasp the root It'll show a color of orange. You add a little bit of milk or uh, anything, really, sugar to make it honey, make it sweet, if you'd like, and then you would drink it. It's wonderful. It kills anti-cancer, anti kills interior cancer. Every house in Napa Nui of stone is used in this fashion, wedging it in this Rapa Nui's style of construction. Here, depicted over and over and over again would be the eye of God, accentuated many times, just two eyes watching us. This grass is the most special of these on the planet, would be this grass, Nga'atu. What's Nga'atu? It's a product of Totora. The Tora is what they would call by the natives in Central America, we would call it Na'atu in Napa Nui. It is this plant that grows in Titicaca. 
Titicaca in South America. Here, well, we don't know which volcano was planted first. We as Rapa Nui believe it is ours. We brought it from Hiva before it sank. We took it to South, South America and planted it in South America. This plant, you could build huge ships. The very first ship that entered Rapa Nui carried 3,000 people. The site is epic. It's like almost like the Grand Canyon. It's one of those things you just can't appreciate unless you see it with your own eyes. You guys got to come here and check this out. It's just ridiculously beautiful. I can't believe this is a real place. Here is very unusual. We don't know what it is. It looks like a Viking. Maybe Vikings in Napa Nui in modern times. It doesn't surprise me. Vikings were also after the big fish. This, this great mountain is called Aroma Mountain. Aroma Mountain would be Maunga Eo. It is this mountain. Rano Raraku would be Raraku extracted Rano Volcano. Here, mountain uh, Aroma has a lake inside. The lake had dried and we were able to find moai with manipulated eyes. So we believe we will be able to find pupils and eyeballs inside the mud. So we prohibited tourists and visitors from going in until scientists and different family members could study this mud and be able to see that, yeah, there's nothing in there. And then eventually water would settle in and create this huge leg and then this lake was responsible for the water used to carve the moai. You needed water to manipulate stones. Perfect place for these. Every moai is coming down from their birthplace. It is here, just like everything was born from the volcano itself. God commissioned us to be here. Remember the three ships that had come to Rapa Nui 3,000 years ago. Each ship had a moai of about a meter. Apparently, these beings were presented to the people in Hiva, the Hivians, before their continent sank. These Hivians were able to make their way to Rapa Nui. Here in Rapa Nui, because of these aliens had been introduced to them in Hiva by Make Make, here they were able to carve it propagate it in the religion continuing the religion of Rapa Nui Orthodox Aringa Ora living face living which would be vision so behind me is two of the most famous Moai in the world this photo is iconic for the island and turns out I just learned that their husband and wife there's the husband there's the wife <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. What we have here depicted, you can see here, these are the cylinders of honey honey. These cylinders of honey honey were extracted from Puna Pau. Puna Pau is the emptied well. Uh, Puna Pau would be in the center of town where these Honey, honey, honey were extracted. They would be wheeled, yeah, by their family to here. You can see the suffering of other stones on these stones. This pumice stone, blah, would be a little softer than a normal stone, would be used as crown for the moai. Pukau, formally is called. We would manipulate the stone, form it into what is called pukau, and then through the back of the moai, we would set up steps, we would set it up so that you could keep elevating these. Once we keep elevating through the back of the moai, up on top, we would put it inside the head of the moai and we would secure it and then we would take the steps through the back of the moai right off. The steps are these uh, paenga, they are blocks of paenga that would enable us to walk up the crown, Pukau, 
place it on the moai and then take it back off through the back of the moai once it's on top of the ahu. Here we have 15 chiefs. They would be representing the largest tribes in Napa Nui. More chiefs are on their way. They're underneath the ground, in the grass, and we have here one that's broken. They would have to build their own moai. Since we restored them, it would be nice to restore more of these chiefs and put them on top of this Tongariki high altar. So normally the video would end here, but I really wanted to send a message to all my patrons and all the people that have helped me over the years. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. There would be no sailing Zingaro. I really, really, really appreciate you guys' patronage. I, I seriously can't thank everybody that's ever given me one dollar. Thank you. You've made this life possible for us. So I had this really cool opportunity to record a local artist. I saw her out in a bar one night and I was like, wow, that was amazing. I'd love to come record you. She said, cool, I have a studio with my brother at my house. Come on in, we'll do some songs for you and we'll, we'll record it. And I tried to fit him in as background music, but it just didn't work. It didn't do the, the movie justice. It didn't do the song justice. So I'm gonna put one of the songs at the end of each of these videos because they're just fantastic. Her brother is playing a horse's jaw as a percussion instrument. It's, just wait till you see it, it's cool. Peace, love, see you next time. Oh, 
paje matadera o te huera o tu uma tu abajine Jere o no ponga no ama y que ya no morara no quimita y tu interés moje no Epe va a cobar no tu paje manga manga que tu ye no Oh, no, 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 no,